Jason Isaacs, how the devil are you? I'm very good, thank you. I've spent uh, a day talking about myself. As my wife, who used to make documentaries, says, people have an infinite capacity to find themselves interesting. It's, it, is, it is a wonderful thing to talk about, isn't yeah. it? Is it the easiest thing to talk about, the hardest, do you think? Well, when I'm talking about a film that I love, I'm incredibly uh, happy with, and I've seen it kind of kill audiences. Uh, when you're selling a film that's rubbish that no one likes, it's a little bit harder. That's a tough one, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, so The Death of Stalin, uh, which comes out tomorrow, is... I mean, it's it's not a stretch to say it's the comedy of the year. Certainly, it's it's an it's a fantastic. Well, you could say though. I can't possibly well, I comment. Can, it's it, it's it's just absurd. I think it's one of the, is the word that I keep coming back to when when talking about it. How how was it pitched to you? How do, how does how does a film like that get pitched to you? Uh, well, first of all, they said Armando Iannucci sent a script uh, with an offer attached, and I thought. That's a terrible mistake. He must have meant Jason Statham or Jason Bateman or something because <laughs> I'm not known for comedy. And I said, just say yes. Yeah. And they said, well, you might want to read it first. And I opened this envelope and uh, and I thought a couple of things. I thought um, uh, they made a terrible mistake offering it to me because it's very, very funny and all I can do is ruin it. Um, and I can't believe that I'm going to get to work with these people. It came with a little cast list I know, yeah. from Amanda. And I looked at it and it's just wall-to-wall comedy gods everywhere you look. Ter- yeah. I, was, I mean, you say that you, you say you're not known for comedy and it's, it's true of a few of the actors in there as well. That You know, Rupert Friend, who does... Rupert, a, how hilarious is Rupert Friend? Who, who does an amazing job of he the He reminded sort of me style. of Gene Wilder. You know, that like slightly yes. mad look. Yeah, yeah, and Young, young Frankenstein. mad kind of thousand-yard stare yeah. he's got in it. But who knew he could do comedy? Yeah. But Jeffrey Tambor's in it, who I kind of worship. Yeah, Michael Palin, who obviously is the Mount Rushmore of comedians, uh, and Paul Whitehouse, and then the Simon Russell Beale, who is our country's greatest Shakespearean actor, one of the yeah. great leading actors on stage, who just you know anchors the entire thing. But then Andrea Riseborough is funny as hell, and she she played Thatcher it's, last, you know, or not last. Yeah. Sorry, she's well known for doing that. So how uh, much of it is improvised? And how much of it is actually scripted? I don't, how does how does Amondo like to work? Well, I'm aware that he'll be listening. Uh, he's not just a comedy <laughs> god, he's omnipotent. And I need to tell you that it's 99.9% scripted. Oh, wow. The skill is to make it look improvised. He walks around with a couple of people, uh, the other writers, the brilliant writers, alongside him with yellow legal pads. And if he doesn't think it's quite working, he huddles and says, we need another insult about uh, schoolgirls. And they'll come up with a 100... I mean, it's a filthy film. Yeah, it grandma, is. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Every other word is uh, something I can't say on the radio. And it's sick and twisted and nasty, but... They have sick, twisted, and nasty brains, luckily. And uh, if you've got a contribution to make, it better be better than he's coming up with his writers. Yes. So it's a high bar. Uh, but there's a little bit of improvisation. There's a, my favourite moment, which people will, will go and see. I, th- I can't rem- forgive me, I can't remember if you're in the scene or not, is, is, which, which must have been an absolute fluke, is where Rupert Friend is on the floor in a frenzy and actually manages to spit on his own forehead. He did a lot of practice. <laughs> that was in the script. <laughs> was he spits it? in the air and it lands back on oh his man, face. Oh, that's amazing. A lot of practice. But it's not CGI phlegm, it's, it's Rupert's own phlegm. <laughs> whilst you're here, I've got to talk to you about The OA, which was one of my, oh, good. Which was one of my favourite series of last year. Absolutely adored it. Uh, and And... Is now, ha- it's hard to talk about without spoiling it. Well, it if is. If you haven't it, seen it, yeah. your life has a hole in it that should be filled with the OA. I absolutely adored it. It's it was brilliant, it's, isn't it? It's, and, yeah. and it's coming back for season two. Yeah. Is, is, is Hap still around? Uh, did Hap even exist? I mean, one well, of the great is, things about the OA is you're not quite ever sure it throws a whether bit of you're a watching something that really happened or someone's telling you a story about something that didn't happen or someone's mentally ill. Or, yeah. You know, the, the ground is very shaky underneath you. So they've written the second season. I had dinner with uh, the writers a couple of weeks ago in Los Angeles and they started telling me what was going on and I felt like someone had, had slipped a, a roofie in my drink. I could, I just, it oh, was wow. so insane, the things they were telling me. Uh, but that's the genius of it. Oh, fantastic. You watch the first episode, you think, oh, I know what kind of show it is. And you watch episode two and you think, yeah, it's, no, no, it's something else. And then by episode three, you go, all bets are off. Yeah. Just take me. And take it comes to the, the, the finale, it just throws you just... Oh. Oh, you know, the hardest thing to do when you're telling stories, uh, I think, written or on camera, is to find a great ending. Yeah. If you find a great ending, you've got a story. If you find a great beginning and middle, it doesn't help you at all. Yeah. I thought the ending was so original and magnificent. I loved it. Oh. Loved it. I'm it, glad you did because... No, I, I'm embarrassed how enthusiastic I am about it because I'm in it, but I'm only in one little part of it, and I hadn't seen the other part and barely read it. Of so when I, I watched it like a punter yeah. all the way through, eight hours of it, and I was kind of devastated at the end. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was kind no, of shaking and laughing it's and a, crying. It's a great I'd had a kind of almost religious experience. I can't wait for it to come back, and I hope you're, I hope you're part of it. Now, uh, here at Virgin, we like to have a bit of fun. And, Excellent. And as, uh, as uh, that's why you're sitting in your speedos, obviously. Exactly. Good. Exactly. Um, and part of part of Death of Stalin, and part of, part of what you're so good at is accents. Oh. And I was, so I would I wondered if you were up for a challenge. Oh, just woke up. I have right, s- I have some lyrics here. 
These yeah. are the lyrics to a, to a classic Virgin Radio song by Green Day. Okay. And uh, can you hear this? Let me just test. Can you can you hear this? Yes, can I heard that? that. So what's going to happen is, I would like you to start in the voice of uh, of Zukov. Oh, okay. When you hear the bell, I would like you to switch to Lucius. Oh, well, do you know, I haven't done his voice for so long. Yeah, exactly. It's like 10 years since I've done his voice. Okay. <laughs> and then and then maybe you could either switch to a bit of Hap or uh, or Gabriel Lorna. Which, which Lorca. Other, oh, which, Lorca. Lorca, sorry. Just hung up my phaser two days ago. Just did for you? This, for the season, yeah. So, uh, I so peeled the laker off. So we've got a verse, chorus, verse, chorus. I'll ring the bell. Whenever you're ready, if we start off as, uh, as, as Zukov. Right. Do you have the time to listen to me whine about nothing and everything all at once? I'm one of those melodramatic fools, neurotic to the bone. No doubt about it. Sometimes I give myself the creeps. Sometimes my mind plays tricks on me. It all keeps adding up. I think I'm cracking up. Am I just paranoid? Am I just... That's a terrible Lucy smell. <laughs> that's it was much better with you, a wig no, on. No, you can do that. You can... Am I just stoned? <laughs> uh, so I went to a shrink. I Let's went to a shrink to analyse my dreams. She says it's lack of sex that's bringing me down. I went to a whore. He said my life's a bore. So quit my whining because it's bringing her down. Sometimes I give myself the creeps. And let's finish on Zukov. No, I'm going back to my natural accent for that. Oh, okay, go for it. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes my mind plays tricks on me. It all keeps adding up. I think I'm cracking up. Am I just paranoid? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that your natural accent? Yeah, I was born talking like that. I, I had season tickets to Anfield for the first 12 years of my life. Amazing. Then we, we moved to London and everybody made fun of me at school, so I went. I went straight into Arthur, my lord. <laughs> went to school like that, you know, see you later, Mum, be born about four o'clock. And I came home and said, listen, I'll be back tomorrow night. I'm not coming back till 5.30. This is messy with my mind. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it's a, it's a social disease. I still do it. Sometimes we're out somewhere in a taxi and my kids lean over and they go, Dad, you're not Irish. What are you doing? It's embarrassing. <laughs> it's, but I get paid for it, so it's all right.